So, Pluto's this weird little planet that used to be one of our main planetary group members. Now, some scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku are saying it might crash into Neptune. Sounds crazy, right? Pluto got demoted to a dwarf planet partly because its orbit is just strange. It still gets a lot of thought. These experts are sounding the alarm about a possible smash-up between Pluto and Neptune, which they say could be bad news for Earth. How could this even happen? Well, Pluto takes a crazy long time, like 248 years, to go around the sun once. And its path isn't a circle like the other planets, it's more like an oval that's tilted a lot. What's wild is that for about 20 years in each orbit, Pluto gets closer to the sun than Neptune does. So you're probably thinking, why haven't they already bumped into each other? It's because of how the gravity of other planets pulls on them. When they first noticed Pluto, astronomers were trying to figure out its weird orbit. It's so different from the others. The cool thing is that even though Pluto's orbit crosses Neptune's, it stays pretty steady. It shows how complicated space stuff can be. Figuring out how three things in space, like Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun, move and pull on each other is a tough problem. Pluto's orbit can be a bit wild, small changes can make a big difference over millions of years. But overall, it stays pretty stable for a really long time. New computer models are helping us understand how big planets like Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn keep Pluto from going totally off course. Jupiter's gravity is strong enough to keep Pluto on track for billions of years. Without all this, our solar system would be way more chaotic. Pluto's orbit is a great example of how wild space can be, with both steady and chaotic things happening. The gravity from planets like Neptune makes its path special. Predicting space events is super hard, especially with crazy orbits like Pluto's. It's hard to know what's going to happen way into the future. Computer models help, but they can only do so much. So, why are these scientists only now worried about a crash? Well, even though a lot of things are keeping Pluto and Neptune apart, Tyson and Kaku are still worried about a possible crash. If Pluto and Neptune crashed, it'd be a wild and terrible event in our solar system. The impact would let loose a ton of energy, and Pluto would probably break apart because it's small and icy. The jump from the crash could spread all over, which could be risky for other planets and moons. Neptune's air and orbit might also change. Kaku, who knows a lot about space stuff, has interesting ideas about space travel and how space stuff connects to big ideas in physics. Understanding how gravity works and how planets move can help us plan space missions better. We could travel through the solar system more safely and even go to other places far away. What we learned from Pluto could help us figure out how to check out other planets. The physics of planets is tied to really big ideas in physics. How planets move and pull on each other has to do with the basic rules of the cosmos. If Pluto and Neptune crashed, it'd be a huge chance for scientists to study some wild stuff that might even connect to string theory. String theory tries to explain the basic forces and stuff in the universe. The crash could make extreme energy and gravity that could show us if string theory is right. For example, the super strong impact could tell us how basic particles and forces act under crazy conditions. Earth wouldn't be affected much because we're so far away, but it could change how we understand the universe. Pluto's strange dance around the sun is still awesome to scientists and space fans. Even though it's just a dwarf planet, new stuff about its orbit is making everyone think about its spot in the solar system again. Tyson and Kaku are warning us about a possible crash between Pluto and Neptune, which shows how wild things can get in space. They're stressing how important it is to get how gravity and orbits work. Pluto's orbit is weird and tilted, which goes against what we usually think about how planets move. It's not a circle like the other planets, and it crosses Neptune's path. The gravity from Neptune and other planets has a big part in how Pluto moves and stays steady over time. Even though Pluto's path is a bit chaotic, computer models and ideas help us guess what might happen in the future. These models show that even though Pluto's orbit is a bit rough, it stays pretty stable because of the gravity from the rest of the solar system. The chance of Pluto and Neptune crashing, as these scientists say, is small but it shows us that space is unsteady. 
It also shows how fragile all the forces are that keep everything in place. Besides the science part, studying Pluto can help us with future space trips. The New Horizons mission gave us great pictures and info about Pluto and its moons. It showed us cool things about Pluto's surface, like mountains of ice and frozen nitrogen fields. It helped us learn about how the geology of this planet works. The New Horizons mission showed us how far we've come with space tech and teamwork. By checking out Pluto and its moons, scientists learned some important info about other planets and what it's like way out in the solar system, which has impacts for future missions to explore other dwarf planets. Pluto being called a dwarf planet has made people think about how we decide what's a planet and what's not. It shows that there are all sorts of things in space, not just the usual eight planets. Checking out Pluto's orbit also teaches us about space motion and how planets move way out in the far reaches of the solar system. By seeing how Pluto, Neptune, and other things pull on each other, scientists can better understand how our solar system was formed and how planets change over billions of years. Pluto's story has helped us learn about how planets move around and how the Kuiper Belt was formed. Looking at Pluto's orbit gives us clues about how gravity might have affected the formation of planets early on. Understanding space motion can help us plan for future space missions, like searching for planets that could have life. By studying how distant things move, we can find good places to explore and see if we could even travel to other star systems. A possible Pluto-Neptune crash, while not likely, reminds us that the universe is always changing and unpredictable. As we keep exploring the solar system and beyond, studying orbits and space motion will be super important for scientists. Pluto's orbit, which is super different from the others, gives us important lessons about how planets move. The fact that its orbit stays steady even though it's weird tells us something about the balance of forces that control space motion. The ongoing study of Pluto's orbit and how it might interact with Neptune shows us how hard it is to understand the universe. With each new thing we learn, we keep making our knowledge of the cosmos better. It's really hard to guess when big things will happen, especially with crazy orbits like Pluto's. These systems are hard to predict, so long-term guesses are often unsure. Computer models help us learn about what might happen to planets, but they also show us how much we still don't know. So, why are these scientists only now getting worried about a Pluto-Neptune crash? Even though there are forces that should stop it from happening, Tyson and Kaku are worried about a possible collision. If Pluto and Neptune crashed, it would be a huge and destructive event in our solar system. The crash would release tons of energy and probably break Pluto apart because it's small and icy. The debris could spread all over the solar system, which could be dangerous for other planets and moons. For Neptune, a crash might change its atmosphere and maybe even its orbit, depending on how it happens. Kaku, who studies string theory, has an interesting take. His ideas about space exploration and how space stuff connects to theoretical physics give us cool insights into space events like Pluto's orbit. Learning about gravity and orbits can help us plan future space trips. This knowledge can help us move around the solar system better, avoid dangers, and even plan trips to far-off places. What we learn from Pluto can help us explore other planets. Planets, gravity, and theoretical physics are all linked. How planets move and interact, like Pluto and Neptune's dance, is tied to basic physics. If Pluto and Neptune collided, it would be a huge deal for astronomy. It might even confirm some ideas from string theory. String theory tries to explain the basic forces and matter in the universe. A crash could create extreme conditions, maybe letting us see if string theory's predictions are right. The high-energy crash could show us how basic particles and forces act in extreme conditions, which is interesting for string theory. While a crash wouldn't affect Earth much because we're so far away, it could teach us a lot about the universe. It could help us understand the basic nature of the universe, as string theory and other physics ideas describe it. Pluto's crazy orbit still fascinates scientists. Even though it's a dwarf planet now, new stuff about its orbit has made it interesting again. Tyson and Kaku warning about a possible crash highlights how important it is to understand gravity and orbits. Pluto's orbit is weird and tilted, unlike the normal nearly round orbits of the other planets. 
the gravity of other planets, especially Neptune, keeps Pluto stable over time. Computer models help us guess what might happen in the future and understand how planets interact. The idea of a Pluto-Neptune crash, as Tyson and Kaku suggest, shows how much we still don't know about planets. While it's unlikely, the gravitational dance between Pluto and Neptune shows how fragile the forces in space can be. Aside from the science, studying Pluto helps us plan space exploration missions. The New Horizons mission in 2006 sent back amazing pictures and data about Pluto and its moons in 2015. We learned a lot about Pluto's surface, like water ice mountains and frozen nitrogen fields. The New Horizons mission showed how much we can do with space technology and teamwork. By studying Pluto, we learned about the different types of planets and the conditions in the outer solar system. This helps us plan future missions to other dwarf planets and objects. Pluto's status as a dwarf planet has also led to talks about how we classify space objects. The debate shows that we're always learning and changing our views of space. While Pluto meets some requirements for being a planet, being a dwarf planet shows that there are many different types of objects. Studying Pluto's orbit teaches us about planets in the outer solar system. By looking at how Pluto, Neptune, and other objects interact, we can learn about how planets form and change. This helps us understand how our solar system began. Pluto's discovery has helped us understand planet migration and the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond Neptune with small, icy objects. Studying Pluto's orbit gives us clues about how gravity affected planet formation early on. Understanding space stuff can also help us plan missions to search for livable planets beyond our solar system. By studying how distant objects move, we can find targets for future exploration. A Pluto-Neptune crash, while unlikely, reminds us that the universe is wild and unpredictable. As we explore deeper into space, studying orbits will remain super important. Pluto's orbit, which is different from the other planets, teaches us how complex planet motion can be. The fact that it stays stable despite its weird shape gives us insights into the forces that control space. In a way, studying Pluto and its potential interactions with Neptune is like trying to understand the whole universe. With each discovery, we learn more about the mysteries of far-off worlds.